Hello, I want to thank you all for joining me for this video presentation today. My name is Paul Brett. I'm a senior software support analyst supporting the ITX product. Today's topic is using the ITX Design Studio debugger. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Here I am on my test machine and my first job is to open up the directory that contains my ITX 1003 installation. I'm going to fire off the start debug server.bat script which will start the debug server in the background. Next I will start up my design studio. When we get into the design studio you will note that I've got one project called AutoMapper. Within that project I have one map source file test.mms in the source I have one executable map, test1, and underneath that two levels of functional map. I'm going to be concentrating most, mostly on this bottom level of functional map where I have some mapping of rules. Now to use the debug server um, we can identify the rules that we want to stop the debug server to stop at and we call those breakpoints and in the toolbar we turn on the debug map option highlight the rules that we are particularly interested in stopping at and right click and choose add breakpoint. You will note that the breakpoints appear in yellow. Back to the executable map level now and if we build and run this map rather than running and completing to the end the debug window has popped up. Now I'm going to make that much bigger and I'm going to make the data column uh, a bit bigger as well. So it stopped at our first breakpoint which is the uppercase rule for the department field. So I'm going to step into this function. First of all it's going to go into the uppercase and the first thing the uppercase is going to do is read the input. The input has been read information technology click the step in button again the uppercase function is applied to it click step in again and then that information is copied into the output field which we've, where the rule started, depth output. We'll hit the continue button and it will jump to the next breakpoint. Here we have our field where the, uh, it's decided whether the person is a member of the pension group. So our rule is an if. It checks the salary band which was the previous field and if it's greater than 5 it automatically puts in a Y for yes. It, it completely disregards the input. However, if it's five or less, then it will read the input and that will become the output. So let's step into this function. I click step in once and it jumps down to the if. I click step in again and it reads salary band, which as you can see for this person is salary band seven, which is greater than five. So it's going to completely ignore the input field. It's not even going to go to the false part of the um, if, it's going to concentrate on the true part of the if, copying that back up to this section when I click the step in button. And then the Y will get copied up into the actual output of this rule and that becomes the final value. Let's click continue to go to the next breakpoint. OK, this is the pension ID field. We have an either function the either function will take either the first value or if it's nothing at all it will take the second value and if that's nothing at all the third value and so on and so forth. Let's step into it now. Step down to either and the first thing either is going to do is read the input. So the input has been read and it's been decided that this field does not contain nothing it contains something. So the result of the either is going to be exactly this data. Click step in it's copied up and yes it's the result of either and then that's going to become the final value of this field when I click step in again. Click continue on to the fourth and final breakpoint for this row. Okay our rule says that if the left of building code is a queue put in x12 otherwise put in the original building code from the input. So let's step in. Step into the if which needs to step into the left which then needs to read the input so the input has been read Z13. So the left is then applied to it, which then becomes a Z. So the if then checks it, which and it's not a Q, we know it's not a Q. So then the 
building code is going to need to be in red so I click step in and now the building code is red again step in and then the result of the if is Z13 which then gets copied to the output as you can see it's a logical progression of up and down but the final result on the rule is always this this top field here so let's click continue to go to row 2 we're back to our first breakpoint again and I'm just going to step in through that it's bought in the word operations it's capitalized it and that's the final result salary band uh, oh no I need to click continue so the next breakpoint is the if on the salary band step in through those rules this person is a salary band 3 now this is not greater than or equal to 5 so it's not going to take a yes by default it's going to read the input which will now appear here when I click the step in button okay it just so happens that input this person is a member of the pension group and a Y has come in anyway so the result of the if this time as it was last time is a Y but for different reasons and then that gets copied up to the output and becomes the final value skip to the next breakpoint we have our either step step the pension ID has been read it contains a value it gets copied up and up and that's the final value continue to next breakpoint here's our building code step 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 C13 now we can see straight away that there's not a Q at the beginning there so we know that the C is going to be copied up to left it's going to be checked the building code is going to be read C13 it's going to be the result of the if and then it's going to be the final output continue okay we're now on to row 3 this is where things take a little bit of a turn so let's step in through this uppercase operations gets capitalized not very interesting here's our if step into here salary band 6 automatically becomes a Y that's the final value continue here's our either our either reads the pension ID now in this particular row there is no pension ID it's resolved to none so when I click the next this next part of the rule is going to be executed resource lib get ITX UID now this gets a long string of alphanumeric characters that's supposed to be completely unique and would take millions of years before you saw a duplicate so I'm going to click step in now once twice three times and that value appears in the either field this is the result of the either it's decided that none is not good enough so it's gone on to the second one evaluated it and that is the result of the either and that is what gets copied to the final output item for this let's continue on to the next breakpoint here's our building code step in step in step in on the input our building code is Q70 well straight away we can see that this Q is going to trigger the second part of this left but let's step in and let the left do its thing it's done a Q now the if is going to evaluate it and decide it, it can't use that it can't use the X12 it's got to read the input from the building oh, sorry it's the other way around it's decided that it, it, the Q is correct it has to use the X12 and that is going to be the result of the if it's going to be the, the fixed value so here we have X12 it looks spaced kind of funny because it's in Unicode um, it being a, a, a literal literals are stored in Unicode but when it comes out to the data it is spaced properly I can assure you so we step in and X12 becomes the final value and we can click continue and continue and continue and continue and we can continue going through every single one of those rows but there's about a hundred or so so I don't think I will what I will do is I will click stop I will let the map come to a complete end now we can run this map normally by turning off the debug button in the toolbar and we just click run and it runs normally we can leave the debug on and remove all the debug uh, the breakpoints and it should continue to the end so if I click here 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 and here right click delete breakpoints go back to the map even though the debug is on if I build and run the map completes to uh, complete successfully and uh, does not call up the debugger because there are no breakpoints so there we go a whirlwind tour of how to use the ITX uh, debug server with the design studio to debug your maps and rules and step through them to see uh, what could potentially be going wrong with the way that you're writing your rules 
I want to thank you all for taking the time to view my video presentation today. If you found it interesting and informative, please hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and if you want to, reach out to me on Twitter at PaulBrettIBM. Thank you.